We are back now, and you know what? We're getting closer to that time of the year when we start thinking about our New Year's resolution. You know, the number one resolution is improving your health. It's also the one that's often given up the most. But you don't have to give up because right now, we're going to talk about how your physical health works hand in hand with your mental health, and that's going to be a winning combination for your overall health. So joining me right now, Fabian Patterson. So tell me about yourself. You are a certified trainer. That's not the only thing. That is not the only thing, like I am a certified uh, trainer. I'm also a certified nutritionist. Mm -hmm. I have a certification in pain management, and I also have a master's degree in uh, mental health counseling. Okay, you got a, a, a long <laughs> resume. I'm a few hearing. things. Okay, <laughs> very qualified person right over here. So when we talk about our New Year's resolutions, Fabio, why do you think that a lot of people fall off the bandwagon? Well, I think most people try to attack the New Year's resolution from a standpoint of they have a big hierarchical goal mm -hmm. when they should start from a small standpoint. Thinking a bit of um, small increments, one of the things I like to tell my clients is Rome wasn't built in a day. Mm -hmm. So take small steps at a time and you'll eventually get there. And I think one of the b best tools they could use for this is a SMART tool, which is SMART is an acronym that stands for uh, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and a time manly goal. So if they use that tool, they're able to break that um, bigger fitness goal down into smaller ones and they're able to um, accomplish that goal better. In addition to that, whenever we have small wins, our brain gets excited. Yeah. It loves when we have small wins and that those small wins is going to propel us into the next win to um, get us prepared for the bigger goal, to accomplish the, the bigger goal. It's exactly. the endorphins. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> now, you know, when you talk about the realistic goals, okay, let's, let me be real with you right now because, <laughs> you know, Diane and I, we are, we're parents right. and then we're also working parents. So that work-life balance, that's a hot topic and that's kind of a trigger word. So how do you actually find work-life balance and you know help yourself out too yes I love what you said you said work-life balance is a trigger word and it is and I think um, our society plays on this work-life balance that we need to invest in this massive incredible thing that's going to change our life which I find to be a myth a work-life balance isn't really necessary thing so if you look at it from the standpoint of there's work and there's my life and how can I interject one into the other. So what I tell my clients is find open pockets within your regular day to fit health and wellness in it so that it doesn't become a stressful thing that you have to meet. Mm. And so what happens is when you set this high goal that you don't meet, disappointment sets in, then yeah. there's stress and there's anxiety that causes cortisol levels to rise, then the weight loss stays. And so, if, really you look at, science, right? <laughs> so if, you, if you look at it from that standpoint and breaking it down into micro goals, fit those um, uh, workouts and your, your wellness into your day to day, especially in Hawaii, we're super busy. So when you find that open pocket, you fit it in there and it works well with your life so you don't have to work around fitness. You know, I do have a couple questions really quickly with the time that I do have with you left. Um, you talk about the recommendations for people. Not everybody is the same and not every person uh, has the same type of a workload or personal life load. So what's your recommendation to them? Um, first thing I would say is try not to think about fitness as exercise, mm. all right? It's, just, it's health. So think of it from a movement standpoint. When you move, you become active, you burn calories, you stay, stay healthy. So look at it from a movement standpoint. Look at ways that fits your lifestyle that you could use to stay active, and that way it doesn't become oh, I need to go to the gym or I need to go to a class. You could do it from your home, right? So the American uh, standard recommend 150 minutes of moderate to intense wow. workouts per week. Okay. Yeah, per Ooh. week. But if you break that down, it's about 20 minutes per day. Okay. Yeah, right? So not too bad. So if you fit that 20 minutes in, in an open pocket, you'll be able to meet that requirement. Rethinking these things. And you know what, don't even worry because uh, if you can, if, if you're having a hard time to be accountable for yourself, get that accountability partner. Fabian, I really appreciate your time and, and these recommendations to our viewers. Diane, I'm gonna send it back to you after we get to the gym. <laughs> I know, Leah and I just agreed to go to the gym together. <laughs>